Welcome to now the seventh installment of our 30 minute workout series. My name is Jeff Bartles. I'm an infrastructure technical specialist at Autodesk, and I am joined by my colleague, Dana Judge. Our other colleague who's usually here, Jerry Bartles, is not going to be joining us today. He's taking some well-deserved time off. Our session today is called Solving Problems Using the Geometric Calculator. If you are new to the 30-minute workout concept, this is something that we put together as a result of some of the comments that we heard from some of our civil infrastructure users using Civil 3D, Map 3D, or AutoCAD. I'm sure you'll agree that when you take a class in Civil 3D or AutoCAD or Map 3D, there's never enough time in that class to cover everything that that tool can do. Usually the classes focus on need to know functionality. What do you need to know in order to do your job? And then after that class is over, all of the other ancillary tools and workflows and shortcuts and things like that are the type of things that you just pick up on your own over a lifetime using an application. So we put together this 30 minute workout series to help address some of those, you know, lesser known, lesser talked about tools, gives us an opportunity to demonstrate those and, and walk through their functionality. And we're hoping by doing that, it helps fill in some of the gaps that you may have and provide even more value for your Autodesk investment. A couple of ground rules for these sessions. When we show a tool, typically we show it from a abstract perspective. And we do that for a reason. This way we can focus solely on how the tool itself works. Because once you understand how the tool functions, you can leverage it using whatever workflow works best for you or in whatever situation works best for you at your office. Since these sessions are only 30 minutes, we hope that it's easy for you to get in and get out and get on with your day. Since we're only together for 30 minutes, our intention is always to start on time and end on time because we value your time. Sessions are also always recorded. If you have registered for the session, you will get access to a hyperlink to watch the session online. Likewise, you'll get a hyperlink to download the session if you'd like to store it to your local hard drive. We are anticipating a large crowd today. We've got several people still coming in, which is fantastic. There is a Q&A pane if you have questions. Dana Judge is going to be fielding those as we go. Since we are going to be having a large turnout, I just want to say that in the event we don't get through all of the questions or all of the questions aren't answered, as long as we have your contact info, we will get back to you. We will get you an answer. Likewise, if anything comes up during the session today that you're really interested in, if you'd like, we are more than happy to do one-on-one -on -one follow up calls. So if we have your information, your, your contact information and your company name, we're more than happy to get back with you and speak with you directly because we really enjoy talking to other users. Just a quick agenda for today's session. We are going to be talking about one of my favorite features in the AutoCAD platform, and that's the geometric calculator. We're going to look at the calculator itself. We'll talk about different ways that we can access the calculator. We will cover the syntax used to create expressions. We'll look at how we can leverage object snaps as part of those expressions to calculate points in space. We'll look at how the calculator um, includes shortcut functions to take and speed things up. And we'll touch on the uh, quick calc palette and uh, how we can access that on demand. And then uh, finally, we'll talk about how the calculator can be accessed within the properties palette if you want to change the properties of your objects. I always have a bonus content item on there. In the event we get through everything that I want to talk about today, there's always things to talk about. So if we get through everything, I will talk about some of those additional things. If not, no worries. We can just push that content to a future session. As always, this is going to be a PowerPoint free zone. We will be working live in the application for the duration of our time together today. So now that we've taken care of our housekeeping, let me drop out of this and I am going to jump over to Civil 3D. In the interest of full disclosure, I'm using Civil 3D 2021. That said, everything that I show you today is going to work regardless of the version of Civil 3D, Map 3D, or AutoCAD you may be using. Everything that I show you has been around since at least 2006. So when it comes to calculators, most of us probably have a calculator on our desk. I know I have one. On occasion, I need to calculate something. I'll pick up the calculator and punch in my equation and come up with a solution. Sometimes then I have to take that solution and incorporate it into an application. Whenever you're transposing numbers like that, there's always a possibility of creating an error. Fortunately, the AutoCAD platform includes a built-in calculator. Down at the command line, I will just type C-A-L and press enter. And you can see that it's now saying expression. This is where I can type in my equation. I'm going to type something simple, 2 plus 2, and press enter. And if we look right here, you can see the solution for that, very easy, is 4. Now we can enter more complex calculations. 
Let me type cal again, and let's do parentheses. Maybe we'll do a group here, maybe 15 times 4. We'll take that quantity divided by 2. I'll press Enter. We'll dial it up just a little bit more. I remember from my geometry days that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. If I wanted to calculate the area of this circle, I'm just going to type CAL, and my expression would be pi times the radius here would be the quantity of 16.3 divided by 2, and I would like that squared. And when I press Enter, I can see the area right here, 208.6724. If I wanted to test that, I could select the circle and go to Properties, and I could see 208.6724. So that's basically how the calculator works. We can pull this up in the application. We can type in our expression and find the solution. Where the calculator really provides the most power is when we can incorporate it into a running command. Let's demonstrate that. Here, I have a circle that has a diameter of 16.3. Let's say I'd like to create another circle one that has half that diameter. I'll launch the circle command and I'm going to start here at the node. I would like to draw this circle based on diameter. When it asks me for the diameter, I'll type apostrophe CAL. I can run this calculator transparently within the current command. Now at the expression prompt, I can type in my expression 16.3 divided by 2. And when I press enter, it will solve that equation and apply that number to the command. So there's my circle at half the size. Let's go to annotate here for a second. And I'm going to be creating some dimensions today, so I'll drag this down. There we go. Let's slap a quick dimension on this, and we can see the diameter there is half the size. Let's try another example. Maybe I would like to scale this polygonal shape such that it matches the size of this diameter. I am going to choose the Scale command. I want to scale these entities. Enter. I want to scale them from the corner. Now, what is my scale factor? I'm not sure. Let's let the computer figure it out. Apostrophe CAL. And my expression will be 16.3. That's what I want it to be. And I will divide that by what it is, 21. And when I press Enter, you can see that it solved the equation and accomplished my scale. So, very easy to use the calculator. Now that we've seen just some basic workflow, let's talk a little bit about syntax. On screen, we can see some basic calculator syntax. Now, most of these operators aren't going to be a surprise. Plus represents addition, minus subtraction, the asterisk, multiplication, forward slash for division, caret for exponentiation, and you can see some of the syntax here for calculating sine, cosine, square root, and pi. This is by no means the full syntax that can be used with the calculator or all the operators. If you would like a comprehensive list, of what can be accomplished with this calculator. We can get that here at the command line. If I type CAL at the expression prompt, I'll press F1. This will bring up context sensitive help for the current command. From here, I'm going to check syntax and functions reference. And if I drag up and down, you can just see the sheer number of things that can be done with this calculator. I would encourage you, if you've not used this tool before, to come back and take a look at some of this documentation. The more you know about this tool, the more power this tool provides. From here, I'm going to choose about how expressions are evaluated. And right here, we can see the basic operators that we touched on a second ago for groups and exponentiation, multiplication, division. We can see some examples of how they would be entered. If I drag down, we can see operators that are used to calculate vectors and some examples. Let's come down a little bit further. I'll choose Use Standard Numeric Functions. And in here we can see a list of the syntax used to calculate things like sine, cosine, tangent, arctangent, logarithms, square roots, all the way down to pi. We've just scratched the surface when it comes to the documentation. There is just a ton of things that you can do with this tool, and all the information can be found here. Let's close this. So we've seen some basic examples of using the calculator with numbers. The reason this is called a geometric calculator is because we can also incorporate object snaps. You can use this tool to calculate points in space, for instance. As an example, let me zoom in here. I have some polylines, and let's say I'd like to draw a circle that is centrally located between these three points. Now, from an object snap perspective, these points could be endpoints. They could also be intersections. I'm sure you wouldn't disagree there. 
here we can see the syntax. Basically, what I would do is add up the three object snaps of my choice and then divide those by three. So let's try that. I'm going to draw a circle. Where do I place the circle? Apostrophe C-A-L. I'm going to let the computer figure it out. My expression, I'm going to do end plus end plus, just for a little variety. I'm going to type INT, same object snap, and we'll add up those three coordinates and divide by three. When I use object snaps, you can see that I get a pick box with a note saying, hey, where do you want to pick for your first endpoint? Where do you want to pick for your next endpoint? Where do you want to pick for that intersection? So when I click this, it will add those three coordinates, divide by three, and I can see it places the circle between them. Let's look at another example. Here I have a polyline. This polyline was offset to create this geometry. Now, I don't even know how far apart these are. I really don't have to know. Let's say I'd like to offset this object such that it's half the distance between them. Well, if I wanted to solve that graphically, I could do that very easily by maybe drawing a polyline. I could draw that from a point maybe nearest to here to perpendicular to here. I could then maybe offset this polyline through the midpoint of this line. Could certainly do that. That would be more than accurate, more than adequate for, for what I want to do. Unfortunately, it requires me to create and then delete sketch geometry. If we look down here at this expression, this is essentially what I just did. So why not just add up those two object snaps and divide by two? Let's try that. I'm going to launch the offset command. I'm going to use the through option. I want to offset through a point. I'll click this object. What point do I want to offset through? Apostrophe C-A-L. We'll let the computer figure it out. Expression, N-E-A plus P-E-R. We'll divide those by two. When I press enter, all I have to do is pick approximately on the object where my nearest object snap is and where my perpendicular object snap is, and we can see the offset. For the most part, virtually any object snap you can get away with just by typing the first three letters. Now, maybe I'd like to calculate an angle. The syntax for calculating an angle is right here, A-N-G, followed by three object snaps. The first object snap is going to represent the apex, or the vertex here, and then I would put in two other object snaps, would be one point on each line segment. Let's calculate this angle. I'm just going to use the calculator for that. I'll just type C-A-L. And my expression will be A-N-G. First object snap I'll use is intersection, and then I'll use a, a pair of endpoints. I can then select, there's my intersection, here's my endpoint, there's my endpoint, and if I look right down here, I can see the angle. Now, it's obviously not a nice, clean angle. Knowing that, let's say that I would like to create a rotated copy of this line. I'd like to rotate that up one-third of that angle. I can use the calculator for that. I'm going to do my rotated copy using grips. We talked about grips in a previous session, so this will be some good repetition here. I'll select this line. I'll click the grip at the end and right click. From here, I'll choose Rotate. I'll come down and choose Copy. I want to create a rotated copy. Now, what's my rotation angle? Well, we'll let the computer figure it out. Apostrophe C-A-L. Expression. The angle defined by this intersection and two endpoints divided by three. I'll press Enter. I can then click my intersection and my two endpoints. And you can see it finds one third of that angle. Now, if you were here for the grips segment a few weeks ago, you'll know that if I hold my control key, I can snap to that increment. So I can come up here and click and actually create the other third if I wanted to. Now, just to test this, that's what we're all about here. Trust, but verify. Let me click these segments and you can see, even though that was an uneven angle, using that calculator, it was to very accurately divide that into thirds. Let me select these and I'll press delete. We'll take it one more step. I can store values in the calculator for use in a future equation. Maybe I'd like to store this angle. If I type CAL at the expression prompt, I'm going to type A equals the angle defined by the intersection and two endpoints. I will then click my intersection and two endpoints. Right there, we can see the angle. That was stored as A. So now in the future, until such time as I close and reopen Civil 3D, I can leverage that in an equation. Maybe I'd like to rotate this up one half the angle. I could click this, 
Let's right click, rotate. I want to create a rotated copy. What's my expression? Apostrophe C-A-L. It'll just be A divided by 2. So we can store values in the calculator as well. Here's another quick example. Maybe I'd like to find the shortest distance from the center of this circle to an imaginary line segment connecting these two points. Now I could physically draw the line between those points and then find the distance from the center of this perpendicular to that line. I could do that, but once again it would require creating and then deleting geometry. Let's just do it with the calculator. CAL, what's my expression? DPL, distance from a point to a line, and then three object snaps. The first object snap is the point I'm measuring from, so in this case it'll be center, and the next two object snaps represent the points that define that imaginary line. I'm going to use an endpoint and an intersection, just because I can get away with those. So center point, that's what I'm measuring from. I'll click this one for my endpoint and this one for intersection. And hold on, let me press F2. We had an auto save there that kind of pushed that up. So there's our value. Let me click copy. And I'll close this. So knowing that value, let's test that. If I physically drew a line from here to here, and then I drew a circle, from here, and I paste that value I just copied, you can see that that's exactly the shortest distance from that center to that imaginary line. So we've looked at some examples of creating expressions. We've looked at examples of using object snaps. Let's pan this over and we'll talk for a second about shortcuts. There are some built-in shortcuts that just make things a little bit easier, a little bit faster. As an example, I've got some lines here that have been offset. Now, they haven't been offset an even amount. In fact, this is only as accurate as I chose to dimension it. It could be rounded to that fourth decimal space. Knowing that, let's say I'd like to offset this line the exact distance that these two lines are apart. I can use this shortcut. DEE -E stands for Distance Between Two Endpoints. Let's try it. I'm going to launch the offset command. What's my distance? Apostrophe C-A-L. What's my expression? DEE. -E. I will click this endpoint and this one. You can see it calculates that measurement to 14 spaces to the right of the decimal, so that is as accurate as it gets. Once that value has been added to the command, I can now click this line and I can offset it to either direction. Let's slide this over. Another shortcut we can use is RAD. This will allow us to leverage a radius from other geometry. As an example, maybe I'd like to fillet these two lines with the same radius as this circle. Now, I don't even know what the radius of this circle is. Doesn't matter. I can say fillet. I'll come down and choose radius. What's my radius? Apostrophe C-A-L. I'm going to let the computer figure it out. Expression, rad. When you use the rad shortcut, you can select a circle, arc, or polyline to pull the radius from. When I click this, you can see there's the radius to 14 spaces to the right of the decimal. I can now click my two lines to fill it then having that radius. Let's click undo. I show you that so I can show you this. The shortcuts can also participate in an equation. Let's say I'd like to fill it these two lines with a radius that's twice this circle. Let's click fill it, radius. What's my radius? Apostrophe C-A-L, expression, rad times 2. I will then select my arc. There's the radius, or the calculated radius. I can then click my objects to create the fillet. In these cases, I'm just doing simple equations. Once again, you could make these equations as simple or as complex as you want to go. Let's look at a couple more. Typically, when I'm dealing with line segments, I have points I could snap to here at the end points and the midpoint. Maybe I would like to find a point five feet from this left end. I could use a shortcut for that. PLD, point line distance. I'm going to be clicking two endpoints, and then I'll be entering my distance. Let's try that. I'd like to move this circle. Let's say move this circle from the center, and I'd like to place it five feet away from this left end. So where do I want to place it? Apostrophe C-A-L. Expression PLDEE. -E and then I'll put five here in parentheses. I can then use the pick box to click my first endpoint and my second endpoint. There we go. Trust, but verify. We can see that's exactly five. 
In addition to finding points that are a specific measurement along a line, we can also do this with percentages. Maybe I'd like to place this circle 75% of the distance along this line. Let me right click, I'll go back to recent input, move. I'll select this circle. We'll move it from the center. Where do I want to place it? Apostrophe CAL. My expression is going to be PLT, point line percentage. I'm using two endpoints, and then my percentage will be 0.75. I can then click one endpoint, the other endpoint, and there's my circle. To dimension this, we can use grips, just like we looked at a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to hover over this one, and I'll choose a baseline. We'll dimension to there. So 25.05 is 75% of 33.4. How can we verify that? Well, we've got a calculator we can use for that. I'm going to type CAL, and I'll say 33.40 times 0.75. And I can see that's 25.05. So let's back up. We'll pan this over a little bit. The calculator, as we've seen it to this point, accessing it from the command line, has been in the AutoCAD platform since release 12. That was introduced in 1993. As you can see, it's not the easiest thing in the world to find. So for a new user, unless you know it's there, it's not very discoverable. So in 2006, the calculator got a facelift. They put the calculator onto a pallet. Let's look at how we can access this same or very similar functionality using a pallet. And then you could choose which method you like better. To bring up the pallet, I'm going to press Control-8. To remember that, just think Calcul-8. This palette can also be found in the Civil 3D platform here on the Home tab. If I expand the Palettes panel, we'll find the Calculator palette right here, as well as the shortcut. When this comes up, if we look at on the left here, this palette was called Quick Calc, when it was given kind of its upgrade or its facelift. In fact, you can open and close it by typing Quick Calc. Because it's a palette, I can have it available on screen all the time. I could right-click on it, and I can anchor it to the left side of the screen, like I've got some of my other palettes here. So I can have it just like my desktop calculator. I could just have this calculator always available in the interface. To look at this, it looks a lot like your Windows calculator. I've got the, the numeric pad. I've got some scientific buttons here. I could do units conversion with this. If I drag down in the variables area, you can see some of the shortcuts that we looked at a little bit ago. In the event you're not seeing these areas, there is a chevron right here that allows us to expand or collapse the calculator. Pay note to the chevron, it's going to be important here in a little bit. Now that the calculator's up, let's just perform a quick expression. I'm going to type 15 times 3, and I'll click equals. Notice we can see the solution here. Also note that it keeps track of a history of your previous expressions and solutions. This can be very helpful in the event you'd like to leverage some of this information in the future. To steal from the history, all I have to do is double click. So if I double click on the expression here, I'm pulling that right back down to the expression area. 15 times 3 plus, I can come over and steal solutions to 45, and I can click equals. So there's my new solution. Now I'm doing things by picking the numbers on screen with the mouse. You can also use your numeric keypad. Up here at the top, I just want to show you a couple buttons. This one will clear the expression area. This one will clear the history. The history will also be cleared automatically if you close and reopen the application. Knowing that, let me pan this over. How could I use this in a command? Maybe I'd like to draw a circle that's half the diameter of this one like we did a little bit ago. I'll create a circle from the node here. I'd like to create that as a diameter. And then what is my diameter? I will come over and I'm just going to punch this out on my numeric keypad, 16.3 divided by 2. And when I press enter, you can see the calculated value. Now to use that, I'm going to come up and click this button. This allows me to paste the value to the command line. When I click this, if you watch the bottom of the screen, you'll see that value come in there. And then I can press enter to complete my command. Just like before, if I put a dimension on this, we can see that diameter is half the value. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close this by clicking the X. Instead of having that calculator always open on screen, we can also leverage the Quick Calc palette on demand, much like we did apostrophe C-A-L before. Let's look at how we can do that. Just like a previous example, maybe I would like to scale this polygonal shape down such that it matches the diameter of this circle, but I'd like to use the calculator on demand. So scale, I'll scale this object from the endpoint here. Now what's my scale factor? 
Earlier, I did apostrophe C-A-L. Now, if I want the calculator palette, I'll press Control-8. Notice when the calculator comes up, it is a different color to inform us that it's being used within an active command. In fact, we can see the active command here. Well, now that the calculator is up on screen, I'm going to punch in my expression. 16.3 divided by 21. Could have used my numeric keypad for that as well. I will then come down and click Apply. This is the same thing as pasting it to the command line. When I click Apply, you can see the values down there. When I press Enter, I can accept it. If we use the Quick Calculator on demand, that's what will also allow us to use some of those shortcuts that we saw earlier, or object snaps, things like that. Those can be leveraged using an on-demand palette. Just as an example, if I wanted to fill it, these two lines having the same radius as the circle, let's just do that, I will say fill it, and I'll choose radius. What's my fillet radius? I'll press Control-8 to bring up the calculator. And then I could just type rad here if I wanted to, or rad times two, or, you know, I could create an expression. Likewise, if I come down here, I can double click and I can, I can just pull it up from the variables area. In this case, we'll use the same radius. I'll just say rad. Apply. Now it's asking me to click the arc to extract the radius. There it is down at the command line. I'll press enter. And now I can click my two line segments. Okay, might, might be a couple more clicks using the palette than what we get from the command line, but if you like the more you know, visual usage of the calculator, that may be the method that you prefer. One more thing when it comes to the calculator, the on-demand, kind of a gotcha. Let me show you this. I'm going to say scale, and I will select this, and we'll hit Control-8. On occasion, the calculator may come up, and you won't see the buttons or the conversion stuff or your variables. When this happens, you may wonder, okay, something must be wrong. Nothing's wrong. Remember, there was that chevron that was used to expand or collapse the palette. The chevron is still there. It just happens to be the exact same color as this lighter palette. So if I click, that's where I can expand that and get the rest of the information. So in the event you see that, that can be confusing, not knowing that this button's kind of invisible. That's how we can access that. One final thing. We are getting dangerously close to the top of the hour. I'm going to select an object here and come over to my Properties palette. I just want to show you that the calculator is also incorporated into your properties. Any numeric item over here, for instance, there's the radius. If I click in here, I could change the radius. You're probably familiar with that. But if you look over to the far right, there is a button that we can use to access the calculator. Brings up that same quick calculator, and it enters the radius here. So I can apply a calculation to that. Let's divide that by three, and I'll click Apply. Any numeric value. If I, well, if I select this and I come over here, my center X coordinate is a numeric value. I could collect the calculator, and if I wanted to move this over 15 feet, I could simply add 15 feet to that coordinate and click Apply. Fantastic. Let me let's go back over here. Let's go to Slideshow from Current Slide. So today we looked at the geometric calculator. We talked about the syntax, how it's used. We looked at how we could leverage object snaps. We talked about some of the shortcuts that are available. We looked at how the calculator can be also available on a palette if you'd like to use it that way. We talked about how the calculator can be leveraged from properties. I also showed you how you can access the documentation for the calculator. I'm hoping that if you've not seen the calculator before, by seeing this session, it gives you the inspiration to maybe kind of explore that a little bit and see how you may be able to incorporate it into your workflow. Likewise, if you have used the calculator in the past, I'm hoping this session maybe showed you one or two things that maybe you hadn't seen before or hadn't considered. With that, Typically, we address questions. We are right at the top of the hour, and like we say, we begin and end on time. So let's just say any questions that have come through that have not yet been answered, we have those documented, and we will be getting back to you. I'd just like to say thank you so much for coming. We had a great crowd today. We really appreciate your time, and we look forward to seeing you guys again in a couple of weeks. Thanks.